Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. What do the best programmers do differently? So if you want to get better at any skill, then one great way to improve is to ask yourself, what do the best people at this skill do differently? That is definitely one question that I highly recommend you ask yourself. Again, regardless of what skill you're trying to learn, whether it be programming, game dev, whether it be fitness, cooking, literally whatever it is, if you want to get better at that skill, then you basically have two options. You can either do a ton of trial and error just by yourself. So for example, in programming, you can try to just open up Visual Studio and randomly type code. That's one way to learn. Eventually, through a lot of trial and error, you will learn. But a much better approach is to just go to someone that is more skilled and learn directly from them. So if you are a programmer and you want to improve yourself as a programmer, then you have to say great question, what do the best programmers do differently? So you can basically take those things, apply it to yourself, and hopefully improve your own learning process. Here's an excellent blog post talking about all the various things that very skilled programmers do. It's a list of 15 attributes that those skilled programmers have. And if it's a really interesting blog post, this one is titled The Best Programmers That I Know. Here this developer writes, I have met a lot of developers in my life. Lately I ask myself, what does it take to be one of the best? What do they all have in common? In the hope that this will be an inspiration to someone out there, I wrote down the traits I observed in the most exceptional people in our craft. I wish I had this list when I was starting out. Had I followed this path, it would have saved me a lot of time. So if that's really the main thing that you say from listening from experts, if you learn from someone who already has the skills that you want to have, if you learn from them, again, it is going to be much, much faster than trying to learn by yourself. That's really a big reason as to why I make all these videos, all these tutorials over here on my channel. When I was just getting started and I was just learning, I did benefit a lot from things that other people have written. Back in my day, YouTube wasn't really a thing. So I learned mainly by reading random Stack Overflows, Googling a ton of things and finding random blog posts or just answers on Unity's forums. But nowadays, YouTube is really awesome. So one reason why I do what I do is basically to pay it forward. If I didn't have all that help growing up, then I would have definitely learned quite a lot slower. So because of that help, I eventually learned quite a bit faster. And now hopefully with all these videos that I'm producing, hopefully I am improving the speed at which you yourself are learning in your own learning journey. So from this list of 15 attributes, for me, my highlights would be know your tools very well. I'm a huge fan of experience in general. The more code you write, the better you become. And in the same way, the more you use a tool, the better you become at that tool. That is why when people ask me what engine to use, I say just pick one and stick with it. You become a lot more capable by deeply knowing a single tool rather than just being familiar with it. I made an entire video on this topic. It's called why I keep using Unity Master One Tool. And if this one I think is absolutely one of the most important things, if you learn just one thing, then definitely learn this one. There are some people that basically constantly jump from engine to engine. Like this week, they make something in Unity. The next week, they go into Unreal. Then the next week, they go to Godot. And if you do that all the time, you're basically never actually going to have a deep amount of knowledge on any one of those tools. Basically, any one of those engines is really great. Nowadays, we really live in a pretty much blessed timeline. Back in the 90s, there was no such thing as a game engine. I remember as a kid, I found something called Dark Basic. It was extremely low level, extremely difficult to work with. And back then, I had pretty much no programming experience or basically very, very little. So I remember that I tried doing a bunch of things with this, but nope, I wasn't able to do it because again, the tools back then were really difficult. Whereas nowadays you've got all kinds of really awesome and easy to use tools. Again, you've got Unity, that's personally what I use, but in real, it's also awesome. Godot is also awesome. Pretty much every engine is awesome. So right now there's basically no wrong choice you can make. Any of the engines that are available, any of those are going to be a good option. I really just recommend that you know your tools really well. So just pick one and get to it and really master that tool. This video that I mentioned here is very important. In there, I talk about how part of the reason why I'm so efficient at doing what I do is basically just because I've been using Unity for literally over a decade at this point. I first started using it back in 2012. So by now, it has now been almost 13 years since I started using Unity. And basically, if you gather that much amount of massive knowledge in just one tool, regardless of what tool it is, then by the end, you will definitely be insanely productive at using that one tool. Next great attribute is breakdown problems. Yep, that's another super important one. Every issue we encounter in programming can likely be broken down into much more manageable pieces. If you think I want to make an MMO, then that seems like an insurmountable task. But if you start by just making a character controller, then just an NPC, then just a quest system, then the client server connection, if you're breaking down into tiny problems, it becomes a lot more doable. This one I would say is definitely one of the most important attributes for an actual skilled programmer. If you yourself are a beginner, chances are you don't yet have this skill. Beginners usually have no idea where exactly to start. They don't know basically how to break a problem down into tiny problems. Most beginners think I want to make a third person shooter and they can't really break that down into all the components and think, okay, first I need the character, then I need the character to aim, then I need to handle projectiles, then like collisions, movement, and so on. If you just think for yourself, okay, I need to make an MMO, I need to make a complete game. If so, then yep, that is an extremely daunting task. Pretty much no one can make that giant task by itself. So if you are a beginner and you want to transition basically onto the next level, I highly recommend you try to gain this skill. I highly recommend you spend some time thinking of something massive like that and then basically just break it down. If you want, you don't even have to actually do it. You can just do this as kind of an exercise. So example like this. So if you want to make an MMO, how would you make it? 
Again, you don't have to actually make it, but just think in your head, okay, I want to make an MMO. How do I break this problem down into tiny, tiny pieces that I could eventually then make? Which in this case, again, start off by just a character controller, then just an NPC, just a quest system, and so on. If you do that exercise, that is definitely something you get better with experience. The more times that you take a big problem and you break it down into multiple pieces, the more often you do that, the easier and easier it becomes. And once you know how to do that, you can literally do anything you want. Because every single problem can always be broken down into tiny pieces. So as soon as you gain the skill of breaking problems down into smaller things, as soon as you gain that, then you pretty much also gain the ability of being able to build anything you want. Another extremely important attribute, and definitely one that is very important to me, is never stop learning. So obviously, I'm a huge fan of this one. That's one of the reasons why I do what I do. I love to learn, and I love learning something deep enough to be able to teach. There's never a point where learning stops, so I look forward to continuing learning new game development and programming things in my 80s. And yep, this one is definitely very important to me. I do love learning lots of things, so whenever Unity comes out with a new tool, I love exploring it and learning all about it and seeing what it can do. And over here on this channel, I really love the fact that before I can make a tutorial teaching how to use a certain thing, I need to have some very deep knowledge on that thing. I can't just have a surface knowledge. If I do that, then the final tutorial video won't be good. So the fact that I have to make videos, that really forced me in order to deeply learn something. And personally, I love that. It gives me an excuse to learn something so I can teach, so I really enjoy the whole process. And yep, I definitely do intend to continue learning new things all the way up to my 80s, basically until my hands can no longer work, which I guess by the time I'm in my 80s, perhaps we might have like some cyber connections sort of thing. So perhaps 60 years from now, we won't even need to use our hands to program. But whatever we end up using, I will definitely be using that in order to keep learning, basically for as long as my brain works. And my advice to you is the same thing, never stop learning. Sometimes people think that if you just follow one course, if you just do that, if you just gain that skill set, then you basically have that forever. And while that is true, that knowledge constantly builds up over time, again, that is always more and more to learn. So basically, don't think to yourself, okay, I just learned this thing, and then I have the knowledge, and then that's it. No more learning. Nope, that's not how it works. You learn that thing, and by learning that, then suddenly you realize, okay, there's more advanced stuff that I now have knowledge to be able to start learning. So then you learn that more advanced stuff, and then you learn even more advanced things that exist that you didn't even know existed. And now that you have that knowledge, now you can start learning those things, and you're constantly jumping from thing to thing. Basically, there's really no limit to how much you can learn. So just look at it like that, basically as a never-ending path, a path that never ever ends. You start, you learn step by step, one thing at a time, and every time you learn something, there's something else to learn, and just keep going, like I said, pretty much until the end of time. Another extremely important attribute is never blame the computer. This is another one of my favorite ones. So one of the things that I most love about programming is how it's deterministic, meaning that the same code will always yield the same result. So if you wrote some code that does not work, it is not the computer's fault. It is executing the code exactly as intended. So whatever issues you have are in the code itself and not in the machine. One comment that drives me crazy is when people say, I followed your tutorial exactly and it doesn't work, but that is simply not possible. If you write the exact same code, then you have to get the exact same result. And yep, this one, like I said, is definitely something that drives me insane every once in a while. Again, whenever I get this kind of comment, which I have received many, many times, it's not necessarily the fault of the person saying it, because the person genuinely believes that they wrote the exact same code, except whenever I ask some kind of follow-up, they see, oh, it turns out that I didn't do this thing exactly, that is why it didn't work, I fixed it, now it works. Because, yep, for the most part, programming computers are very much deterministic. 1 plus 1 always equals 2, 2 plus 2 always equals 4. So if you write the exact same code, always will have the exact same output. Again, ignoring things with randomness, but in general, yep, same input, same output. So if you are following some kind of tutorial or just making some kind of system by yourself and something isn't working, don't just blame the computer because the computer is really just doing exactly as intended. It is running your code exactly as you wrote it. So if it isn't working as intended, then that's because your code, whatever you wrote, isn't quite properly. Basically, there's no point in getting upset at the computer itself. The computer is really just doing what it's sold. So if you find some kind of problem, don't waste energy blaming the computer. Just calmly go through your own code, reread everything, add a bunch of logs all over the place in order to see what exactly the code is doing, and eventually you'll figure out, okay, so this thing was wrong. If I modify this, then everything works, because again, the computer is just doing as it's sold. So if you give it the right instructions, it will give you the right output. All the other attributes are also excellent. If you want to become a better programmer yourself, then definitely go read the entire post. And I absolutely love the last line. Don't trick yourself into thinking that you can't skip the hard work. There is no shortcut. So good luck on your journey. So yep, keep writing code and making interesting things. The more you do, the better you become. And yep, this last line is definitely very, very important. There's really no, no way to skip the hard work. Sometimes people ask me in the comments, how do I get as much experience as you already have? I just started programming a month ago. And my answer to that is, well, you can probably do it much faster than I did by following all the resources that exist nowadays. But whilst it won't be much faster than I did, instead of taking maybe 13 years to get to the knowledge that I have nowadays, instead of that, maybe it won't take you five years but you absolutely cannot get basically the same amount of knowledge that I currently have by just going through it for about three months. You can't really do a really intense bootcamp or something like that. 
and get a decades of experience in just three months. That's just not possible. At a certain point, it really just comes down to basically mileage, basically doing a ton of code, writing a ton of code nonstop. And as soon as you write, let's say a million lines of code, you will definitely have that knowledge. But naturally, it takes time. It takes a lot of hard work to write those million lines of code. So that is why my advice really just be consistent. Try to do something every single day because time won't pass no matter what. But if you take that time and you focus on doing a thing every single day, if you do that, then when the time passes, which will do, in the future, you won't have gained the knowledge that you want. Here on the original post, like I said, there's a bunch more interesting attributes. So read the reference. So yep, when it comes to documentation, I highly recommend you do that. Another really awesome one is read the error message. And <laughs> this again, another one that sometimes I see in the comments and also drives me crazy. Some people just post a comment saying I have an error and they don't describe what exactly the error is. And with that, I really have no way of helping. You need to actually read the error message in order to know what exactly the error is. And if you do, and if you read it carefully, chances are it will actually give you a ton of information so you can solve whatever error happened. Then don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. So yep, don't ever think to yourself, okay, this task is beneath me. Even if you are an extremely advanced programmer, if for example, your game requires building a super basic health system, then just go ahead and write that. Don't think that you're above it and give that task to some intern or something like that. Code is really code, whether it's simple or complex. All of it won't give you experience, all of it won't be helpful. So make sure you do both simple things and complex things. Then always help others. Personally, my way of helping is over here on this channel. But if you're working on, let's say, a normal job where you are some kind of senior engineer and there are juniors, yeah, I would say definitely take your time to actually guide those. Again, it goes back to the thing that I was mentioning, which is how it is much easier to learn by having someone guide you as opposed to just learning by yourself by trial and error. So if you yourself are some kind of senior engineer, then you definitely take some time, a very small amount of time that is going to give quite a lot of knowledge to those junior engineers. And then those will eventually become senior engineers. And hopefully, since they were helped when they were juniors, they will then help their juniors. And basically, the whole cycle keeps going. Then write and status doesn't matter. Build a reputation. Have patience. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Don't guess. And keep it simple. So you have 15 very interesting attributes. Personally, I think I'm a decently skilled programmer. I'm definitely not the best. I'm not John Carmack. But I believe I'm more skilled than most due to the fact that I've written millions of lines of code. And I really like this list of 15 attributes. These are definitely all things that I constantly try to improve and I encourage you to do the same. So like I mentioned, how life is pretty much a lifelong learning journey. That is why over here, yep, I'm constantly trying to improve this. So despite the fact that I already have a decent amount of experience, despite that, I'm still constantly trying to improve. And I highly encourage you to have that same mindset, regardless of what skill you have, regardless of if you are a beginner, intermediate or advanced, Regardless of that, definitely always keep trying to prove because you can indeed always improve. All right, so that's what the best programmers do differently. I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is where I cover the latest Game Dev news and interesting articles that I come across every week. I publish a new issue every Sunday, which is always very entertaining and educational. Sign up for free with a link in the description. And there's an awesome Humble Bundle that just started. This one has tons of tools and visual assets. For example, this really nice wireframe shader. You've got this tool to help you easily draw all kinds of debug shapes directly in your world. You've got a pack with a bunch of really cool shader effects. Then you've got some really nice dungeon props. You've got a bunch of everyday motions. Also some super cool cartoon VFX. And a bunch more stuff from a modular castle. You've got Fishnet Pro, some blood effects. You've got tons of icons, a bunch more characters, sci-fi bosses, dinosaurs, and all kinds of things. As always, if just one of these assets looks interesting, then the home bundle is worth it. So check it out with the link in the description. All right, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.